Hey guys, uh, Caleb Marty here. I've been really excited to make a video that shows you kind of step by step on how to purchase your first single family home. Um, the reason I'm starting with single family homes, you'll hear me talk a lot about apartment complexes, but I feel like single family homes is where a person needs to start before they start stepping into bigger projects or stuff that could get them in over their head. If you can master single family homes and you can definitely take care of larger apartment complexes, it's just a, it's a progression. Okay guys, step one is develop a plan. Um, you're going to see a lot of different investment strategies if you've been on YouTube or researching um, real estate and investing. I feel like the model we use is probably the best there is for um, not only cash flow, quickest gain, best return on investment, and just structurally sound and safe. And it's value add real estate. So we want to buy a discounted property and then we want to add value to it. When we do that, we're creating a, a big separation between what we have in the property and what the property's worth. And that equity, or that is equity, and that equity is non-taxed until you sell it. We only hold real estate. I very rarely sell it. And that's just if it's something that doesn't really fit our um, normal holding criteria like a good deal that came up but we just it doesn't make sense to hold it like a two hundred thousand dollar property in our area is not going to bring that greater rent and probably be more of a liability for us than anything so we'll go ahead and sell something like that but just for example one of the last houses we bought we paid twenty three thousand dollars for it because the seller was very distressed they had to move it quickly and the house ended up appraising for about seventy thousand is all we had to do is fix some subflooring, some floor joists, and um, there was mildew remediation from where a washer had been leaking. It wasn't mold, it was just, you could tell that it was creeping up the side of the cabinet, so we had to fix the cabinets, cut some wood out of it, and replace that, and then the subflooring, but it had swelled it. But all in, we were probably looking at 12 or 1400 bucks to fix that stuff, and the house appraised for 70,000. It already had siding, roof, um, refinished hardwood floors just very nice property and it was just because we had already set up our um, lead generation people were just sending us stuff that they knew we could close on it quickly and it happened on that property so if you're out there consistently working your leads and contacts to generate new property you're going to eventually get some really good deals so uh, one example that i wanted to give you guys too was a uh, remodel that we did is a little more in depth than the last one I was just talking about. It was our Moffat house. We purchased it for 38,000. Um, it already had a new roof, but the siding and stuff was old, outdated, faded blue. So we put new siding on it and new flooring throughout, painted all the walls a gribble gray, the trim white, um, laid new quarter round trim, and installed new light fixtures, new hardware like cabinet knobs, um, faucets, stuff like that. And then that, this also includes labor, but our expenses were $38,000 purchase price and then $10,500 for all of our materials and for one guy to work about six weeks up there. Um, that put us right at 48,500 and the house appraised for 80,000. So that came out to be right at 60% of market value. Um, and we found that a lot of our stuff comes in at 50 to 60% of market value, even though our target is 65. But a lot of that comes from our volume, so we can buy in much deeper discounts, and so it lowers our um, fixed costs. And you'll notice as you get going, you'll start building bigger discounts, and the larger you get, the uh, more incentives you get to buy in volume. And um, so just, keep an eye on your target and always source ways to save money. And like we only put one guy on this property because when we put two or three people on it, um, if they stop and talk, then you've got three people at 15 to $20 an hour sitting there talking, not working. And the project time takes about the same amount of time, but it's just not cost effective once you've got more than one person on the job. Now, Step two is finding the money. So you either are gonna be all cash when you purchase, or you're going to be financing it through a bank on a construction loan or 
um, refining it after you've paid cash and need to be cash back out or even a private lender you know if you've got a buddy that has a bunch of cash and you don't you can give them a 20 percent return in the deed to the property so they can be a lien holder on that property to protect themselves so you can't um, if you go under they still have control of the property and but let's in this example say that you are going to finance it through the bank you don't have any cash you don't or you don't have much cash and you don't have a private lender to help you out getting started so we'll use seventy thousand dollar market value as a starting point just for this example um, so 65 percent of a seventy thousand dollar value house is forty five thousand five hundred so you need to be all in at 45,500 on a $70,000 house for this model to work. And so that's gonna be, I'd probably start looking for houses in that $45,000 range and looking for properties that have been setting longer or very distressed and I'd start making offers. I'd start low enough to where I knew that if I had seven to $8,000 worth of repairs that it needed, I needed to buy that $45,000 all, I need to be, in order to be all in at $45,000, I need to pay $37,000 for it. Or if it just needs paint, then I might be able to go in at forty-three dollars and put $2,000 worth of paint in it, but try and leave a little buffer there. Um, so you'll, you'll have to analyze a lot of deals to be able to find a good one because 90% of the deals aren't going to be that good. But if you find your $70,000 house, you can make the deal work and get it under contract and you're going to be all in at 45,000. That means that you need to get financing lined up on that 45,000. Most banks are going to look for a 15%, possibly even a 20% down payment depending on how strong your credit score is. And so I would recommend looking for a construction note where they're going to advance you the purchase price of the house minus your 15% down. And then as you remodel it, they're going to advance against that remodel line um, up to 80% of the house. But we'll just say we're going to the 45000 So you're going to need to bring about $7,000 as a down payment to purchase this property. Um, so once you've got your $7,000 down payment saved up, you're going to make, need to make sure your credit score is good. And to do that, you can pull it on Credit Karma or Experian app, any of those things, and make sure that your credit card balances are under 30%, 10% or less is better, no delinquencies, no late payments, charge-offs, any of that stuff. Make sure all that stuff's taken care of. Um, I like to be over 740 credit score so I can get top-tier rates, but... Um, I've also noticed as we've got going that um, my credit score doesn't impact my rates as much as what it did whenever I first started. Um, it's kind of been going off more of a relationship than it is my credit score. Um, I fluctuate between 710 and 780 depending on when my credit card balances are pulled. and I don't pay much attention to that anymore on the timing, so sometimes it hangs me up, but it's never been a big issue. But on your first property... You need to make sure that your credit score is good. And I think 660 to 700 is probably gonna be the minimum you're gonna see on an investment property that a bank's gonna to wanna to lend you. And once you got your credit score lined out, you need to make sure you've got a financial statement drawn up. That's a list of all your assets, your liabilities, or your payments and how much you owe on those. Um, probably a couple months bank statements and your last two years of tax returns or um, W-2s. Um, after you've got all that stuff in line, start interviewing lenders and find out which one offers the best rates or you feel is going to be um, the easiest to work with. And make sure and explain your plan, what you're wanting to do. And if you're not going to be pulling all 80% loan to value out of these properties, the bankers are going to be sitting in a good position after a few deals. You're going to have a lot of equity built up and probably won't have to use so much of your cash as a down payment anymore. They'll let you use some of that equity that you've got. So um, just make sure you choose a good lender starting out because um, they can make you or break you. Step three is um, getting a good agent making sure it's somebody you trust and that is knowledgeable in real estate. And then 
um, taking him with you and your viewing properties, whether he's found them for you or she's found them for you, or you found them on Craigslist or Marketplace, or somebody sent you these leads off of Facebook, um, make sure they're on board for what you're doing and they understand the concept. Don't let them change your mind for um, buying just something for cash flow because a lot of agents think if you pay a hundred thousand for it, you rent it for a thousand a month, and that's just the way the system works. We want to buy that same hundred thousand dollar house for six hundred and fifty or sixty five thousand and still rent it for a thousand dollars a month. So keep that in mind when you're talking to them, but stick to your guns and make sure you're at sixty five percent of market value. And you want to generate as many leads as possible on these because you're going to knock ninety percent of them out and be sure to not go in too deep. I really don't recommend for your first ones to be getting into sheetrock, wiring, plumbing. There will be some plumbing on most houses that are distressed. You need to make sure that all the plumbing sound. But um, once you've found the house that you want and all of your numbers work out good, make sure you get your inspections and start making your offers. Um, we start low. So if I want to pay, say I want to buy the house at $38,000, i am probably going to start at thirty-two or 33000 and let them counter. They're almost always going to counter. If they don't counter, then we'll come back in and just creep up a little more to get their attention. But I want to get them moving off their price because if we're $10,000 apart, we're probably not going to come to a deal if they won't counter at all. Um, but if you keep pushing them or move on to another house, you know, if you've got a list of 10 houses that you're wanting to make offers on, start low on all of them. And if you get one that starts countering back, go work on that house and then let the others settle a little bit and that might even be your next deal if they don't accept an offer you can't make an offer up front um, but make sure your agent is one or is very good at um, submitting offers knowing how to negotiate when to set and wait for them to respond uh, when to make an additional offer um, really make sure you do your research on your agent, ask around, make sure they know what they're doing. Because if you don't have a whole lot of experience in that, um, a good listing agent or seller's agent is probably going to eat your lunch. Okay, guys, so step four, you've already got your property under contract. The seller's committed to sell it to you at the price you're happy to pay. Now you've ordered your inspection. And once the inspection comes back, on a distressed house, you're gonna have quite a bit of stuff on that inspection list. And so I'll normally come back and try and negotiate a little bit more to get that uh, sales price down. If I can negotiate another thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars off of that price, once the buyer's already, or once the seller has already committed to sell it, they've, they're in a different spot mentally. So they've decided they're gonna sell it and they're excited, they're already spending the money, they've already got it spent maybe because they've already purchased another house and you've got it under contract. So the power's in your shoes now. So if you can negotiate a little bit more off of it by just um, finding the heat and air unit may need more updates or work than what you expected or um, find some roof leaks that need fixed, floor joists, you name it. If you can find it, you can use it as a negotiation tool because that's one way you can break a contract is because you don't like the um, way the inspection went. So use that to your advantage. And then once you've closed on the house, begin your remodel procedure. And that is step five. Okay, so step five is your remodel. And so day one, we go and remove the carpet um, get rid of any trash, debris, switch plate covers, carpet tack strips, and then remove the uh, outlet covers, switch plate covers, door knobs, anything that is going to get painted. We try and remove it, tape it up, whatever we need to do on that. Uh, day two and day three, we repair the trim, sheetrock, replace the doors if they need to replace if they got big holes in them, anything like that. Um, day four, we spray the trim, the doors, and the ceilings. But then on day five, we spray the walls agreeable gray. And then we back roll it with a roller to make sure that there's no spray lines or anything like that. We're not professional painters. Um, I just bought a spray gun and we just figured it out. Um, but if you use that roller to back roll, 
if you're not a good painter, you can use that roller to get up an inch and a half to two inches away from your um, edges. It makes it a lot easier when you're coming back and edging. Um, day six is when we come back and edge the paint. Day seven, we install the outlet covers, light fixtures, and any hardware that we may have. Um, we also paint the cabinets on day seven. If, if we've got enough time, it might roll into day eight. But day eight and day nine, we lay flooring. And if it's a big house, you might need a third day, but typically 1,200 square foot and less can be done in two days if you're using a lure luxury vinyl like we use. Um, day 10 is when we lay our quarter round trim and nail everything in, and then we'll go back and caulk it in, um, do whatever touch-up painting we may need, and then that kind of takes care of the inside once you button everything up it might take you a few extra days there when you're first getting started then we move to the outside so we'll make sure that the contractors are putting a roof on if we're not doing the roof ourselves um, we'll make sure that it's getting new windows if it needs new windows um, we hire all of that out just because it doesn't make much sense for us to do that in house um, then if we're going to paint, like if it's got siding on it that's old aluminum siding or concrete siding, we'll paint it. If not, we'll replace it with vinyl siding and get vinyl siding at $55 a square or something like that. And it's really easy to hang. And that normally takes two to three days to do that. Painting only takes a day. Um, so within one guy can do an entire house remodel if it's light remodel like this in less than a month. If it's taking them more than a month, then they're probably just milking it out and you probably need a new guy. But I feel like your first property, you probably need to be hands-on doing a lot of this yourself. So if you do decide to use contractors later on, you know what the timelines are, you know if they're trying to gouge you on the repairs, you have a better idea how everything works. And you'll probably find out after using couple contractors that you're better off to actually hire somebody in-house that's doing exactly what you need them to do every day even if they're just helping you nights and weekends you're gonna get a lot better bang for the buck if you've got control of it in-house step six is leasing the property so we use rentecdirect.com for handling our listings collecting rent tracking our expenses um, it also builds us an online website where people can go and see what um, properties we have for rent at the time. And then once that's done, we list everything on Facebook Marketplace, maybe Craigslist. Um, Rentec also publishes like Apartments.com and Zillow, some of those places. So our listing gets seen by a bunch of different people in a short amount of time. We make sure our pictures are good. You don't want fuzzy pictures. You don't want bad angles any of that stuff so Swayden and Tori do a really good job on handling this aspect for us and we're going to post a link in the description to Swayden's video on how she leases properties. Step seven is cash flow. So we've got a $70,000 house that's our as completed value. Um, so you're asking for an as-completed appraisal when you're talking to your lender for that construction loan. And so when they order the appraisal, they'll have an as-is value and an as-completed. And so our as-completed value on this house was $70,000. Rents for $800 a month. We put $8,000 down. Um, our mortgage is $38,000. That's going to include some title costs, um, some lender fees, and appraisal costs. Our payment should be about $210 a month. Taxes and insurance together should be another $140 a month, leaving our cash flow about $450 a month. Now that doesn't include any vacancies or repairs. Um, everything that you bring in off of this house should be going into an account for that stuff. And once you get to your, um, what we call a cushion, once you've got a predetermined cushion that you want to hit, everything past that, you can start reinvesting back into more properties. Probably wouldn't hurt to have three to $4,000 set back in case you have a heat and air system go out, anything like that. But all of your other costs or repairs should be pretty minor because you've already fixed all the stuff in your remodel that could pop up later. You're not replacing carpet. You're not going to be replacing the flooring because you got good flooring in it. 
Um, your walls have already been painted, so you're not going to have to do any major updates. So your repairs should be very minor, as long as you've got good structures like a roof and windows. But if you don't, that should have been in your remodel um, originally. Um, so that $450 a month is cash flow. That goes in your bank account every month after your taxes, mortgage, and insurance are paid. And that leaves you with $32,000 in equity in this property. Now that equity can be used later on if you talk to your lender about this. They should let you use that equity to purchase more property without you having to put any cash down. Or you might be able to take your $8,000 down payment you made back out of that because you gained so much equity. So you're technically sitting that property with um, nothing out of pocket when it's all said and done. So you'll have created cash flow out of thin air and you've still got your $8,000 set in your checking account. And then after 25 years, most property values double every 25 years and your mortgage will be paid down. And so once that property value doubles, rent should roughly be double what it is now too. So instead of being $800 a month in rent, it's now $1,600 a month in rent. And instead of being a $70,000 house, it's a $140,000 house. So with one property, that sounds really good. But with 100 properties, um, you take all that times 100. So the numbers, as you scale it, get almost astronomical. So that now that you've completed all the steps and you own your first house, you need to start looking at how to scale up. So when we look at um, our purchases on materials, we need to decide how much we can remodel over the next 12 months. So, and then break it down into different order cycles. So we need to order so many semi loads of flooring, so much paint at a time, um, anything we can do to get our volume pricing down. And we can also plan out 30 pallets of flooring will last us roughly two to three months. So we know every two to three months we need to be ordering flooring to keep our volume pricing where we want it and to also help us systematize each remodel. So if we can have two pallets of flooring, uh, 15 gallons of agreeable gray paint, five gallons of solo white paint, one gallon dovetail paint for the cabinets, um, some brushes, everything organized. So as soon as we begin the next remodel, we're just taking all of that to the job site and getting started. And so we can compress our remodel times down even more and just keep working it out because our biggest gain is on the remodel and purchase. The cash flow is great. Cash flow is going to build long term wealth, but the initial equity gain from the remodel is going to force wealth very quickly. Because if you can gain 35,000 on every house or even 50, you know, the, the margins can get larger as you. Um, buy more expensive properties or dial in your processes, you can make a $100,000 house out of a $50,000 investment with the right time and, and the right deal. And so volume of deals is what you're going to need to have in order to get to the next level where you've got people helping you manage, maintain the properties, um, purchase the properties. And then as you get that system built, you can start taking steps back out of the entire process and kind of go back to either your other business or spending more time with your job, your family, whatever you choose. But you have to have um, volume and you have to do it very quickly because if you stretch it out over too long of a time, you can get burnt out with it. You may not ever get enough um, momentum going to get price reductions on your materials. So, Talk to your private lenders, talk to your bankers, come up with how you can get a hold of more money to do more deals because you'll eventually be able to get that money back. You can get it out of your purchase and remodel. You know, if you come in under 80%, you can pull up to 80% of the asset out of it. So if you need that cash back, don't worry too much about it. You can get it back out as long as you're making sure your remodels come in under budget. Okay, we've went over everything that you need to do from start to finish on purchasing and remodeling a house. Our next videos are gonna be a little more in depth on single family homes. We're getting ready to finish up a Web City property now that 
we should have about 50 to 60,000. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but 50 to $60,000 all in and the property appraised for 165,000. So we'll go over start to finish what the property looked like, what we did on the remodel and some of the materials we used and some of the adjustments we made to the property. And we'll show you how we're going to rent it out for roughly $1,100 a month. We could probably get more out of it, but we want it to be well within somebody's means and our payment should roughly be $200, maybe $250 a month on the property. So stay tuned for that. We'd appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet and stay tuned for more videos. So when I'm talking about being all in at 65% of market value, that is um, the property purchase price plus the remodel must equal 65% of market value. So if it's a $100,000 property, I want to be all in at 65,000. That that's purchase and remodel included in that 65,000. And so I'm going to hear a lot of people say that everything in their area goes for market value or it's a bidding war or there just isn't anything on the market at 65% of market value. And that statement's true because even in our area, if I get on the MLS and look, everything's going to be priced high there's going to be multiple offers on it or um, they just don't they overlook deals that are really good deals it just doesn't maybe fit somebody's buying criteria so you're going to have to find a little bit of a niche for us we found more of a niche in apartments but we still do really good in houses we just couldn't get a big enough deal flow for the amount of properties we needed to buy in our area that's why we switched to apartments but um, we look for properties that need easy updates like paint, flooring, trim, light fixtures, um, backsplash, counters, maybe some cabinet updates. It just depends what it is. Everything's a little different that comes across your plate. But if you kind of know what it costs you for each thing um, to complete that project, you can have a general idea of what your all-in costs are going to be. So you can kind of sift through some deals. Your first few deals, you're probably going to have to get bids from contractors and um, work up some estimates so you know what it is and there will be some projects that just never probably 90 percent of what you look at are no deals you can't even uh, can't even make them work but if you can make five to ten percent of your leads turn into purchases you're doing pretty good and whenever we're looking for houses i'm talking to agents bankers scouring craigslist facebook marketplace um, pretty much anything I can to generate leads. I'll make Facebook posts if we're looking for um, houses in, say, a town next to us or our town. And normally I'll get quite a few leads off of that. And we're looking for people that are really distressed. You know, they're wanting to get rid of a property quickly. And so we know we can close quickly. And we already have our lenders set up. We have um, cash on hand to close on properties if they're good deals. Um, and we'll go over some of those options as well as what I would look for if I starting over again. But um, a few of the projects we've got going now are at they're going to be 35 to 40 percent of market value when they're completed. And so deals like that are even out there. But um, our threshold is we never go in over 65 percent of market value. So as long as you keep those terms in mind, um, you're never going to get hurt. Just make sure that you're focused on that. So you don't settle for 90 or 95 percent of market value just because somebody says it cash flow is good or it's going to appreciate over the next 10 years everything you buy is going to appreciate so there's no reason to settle for an okay deal when there's tons of home runs out there you just have to dig for them